travel. We've learned about people all over the world. We've seen how they organize themselves, how their economy worked, what they believed, and in what they knew. We've listened to their stories, myths, and legends. We've tasted their food. We've sung and danced with them. We've wondered, why do they go about things so differently from us, and yet are so similar? To understand this, we've looked to ourselves, realizing that how we organize ourselves, how our economy works, our beliefs and knowledge, our stories, myths and legends, our food, songs and dances were not the only ones. We've realized that we are strangers too. The Barcelona Ethnology Museum collects, preserves, studies and disseminates heritage connected with everyday life in Catalonia and the rest of the world. It has over 18,000 pieces for which the similarities and differences between diverse cultures can be explained. Many of these cultures coexist in the city of Barcelona itself and elsewhere in Catalonia. The museum shows how these cultures spread and mix together all over the world, as is the case with Catalan culture itself. But it isn't just objects that have stories to tell. Ethnology is based on giving people a voice so that they can be the ones who explain how they see themselves. In the year 1948, the Technological and Colonial Museum was set up with August Panella at its head. The aim was, through the multidisciplinary approach, to reconstruct the culture of the Catalan people, as well as those of the rest of Spain and of the peoples who formed or had formed part of these colonies. Right from the start expeditions, we organized throughout the world to study new cultures and I did his own museum's collections, Panilla surrounded himself with a team of experts who shared his interest in expeditions. One member of this team was the eminent ethnologist Jordi Sabatepi, who was an expert to the traditional regions of Equatorial Guinea, where he studied the primates of the area. Sabaté played a part in several of the museum's projects to find out about the Fang people. He collected numerous pieces, high likes of which included the Bieris and the rich collection of sketches. Ramon Violán was an ethnographer who did much of his work in the Catalan Pyrenees where he was born. The displays in the museum show the objects has collected and described for Barcelona City Council. This is an important collection recording traditional Catalan culture and a way of life which was already in retreat before the march of industrialization. Alongside the Catalan collection, the museum has another with more than 45 pieces illustrating rural life of the Iberian Peninsula. Important contributions were also made by Joana Mathers and Zeferina Amil, two more of the museum's ethnologists, and the work by different researchers such as Rosen Serra i Pagès, Adelaida Ferrer, Josep Maria Batista i Roca, and Vigna Cuoni, among many others. The sculptor of Del Serra's relation with Japan led the museum management to organize several trips to its islands. The collections, the earliest of which go back to 1957, hold over 3,700 objects with help to understand the traditional Japanese way of life in the 1950s. Realizing that modernization was endangering the ancient culture of the Papuans, it was in the decade that objects representing Mopric and Sapric cultural life were collected. It was in this period that cooperation with the businessman and collector Albert Folk began. An expedition team was set up which aided new collections of material representative of native Australian culture. In this way, an exceptional set of materials was built up to understand the culture and the world of native Australians. The 
museum considers that knowledge must be available to anyone. An interested individual has at their disposal the museum's library, made up of over 45,000 books and magazines. The year 1959 saw the creations of the Picture Archive. It took as its starting point the collection from the Museum of Popular Traditions and Arts and Industries in the Pueblo Español Munjuic. Today, it contains more than 50,000 images, highlights of which include original sketches by Ramon Noé, Josep Ribot and Ismael Casasayas, as well as a considerable collection of Japanese etchings. The culture of a people goes beyond its material products. There is also an oral and immaterial heritage which resides in the spirit of cultures. Their music, their dances, their stories and more. The museum's video archive includes recordings, many of them unique. They show this kind of heritage ranging from popular festivities throughout the world to the history of salsa and rumba music in Barcelona. Dances, music, talks, showing of documentaries, stories, workshops, games, food and more. The museum collections are explained and complemented with the organization of a program of activities which set out to bring them closer to the public. The Barcelona Ethnologic Museum is a place for reflection, sharing and exchanging information between those to attend and run activities. Residents in the neighborhood, immigrant associations, institutions, consulates, NGOs, and associations promoting popular culture in Catalonia and throughout the world cooperate with the museum. The museum's program of activities encourages active participation with guide tours, workshops, advice, and training sessions for schools and groups. The museum is overlooking. It goes out to other continents to demonstrate traditional dance and rituals representing Catalan culture. This ethnology museum sets out to be useful to people, to excite visitors, to conduct knowledge to them, and to be a meeting point and a place for reflection. This is why Barcelona Ethnology Museum will go on working to be a museum for the people who live in Barcelona, preserving the memory of the way we were, assessing the way we are, and thinking about what we want to become, serving those who have always lived here and those who have just arrived. We want it to be a museum with a place for everybody. An anthropology museum open to all. <laughs>